In fact, the Guildhall was far from being alone. London, at this date, was a city of precincts. In all, there were more than 20 religious institutions in the city, each one of which was set in a walled enclosure, just like a modern cathedral close. So, today, when you visit Canterbury, as you walk down the street, you see the gatehouse, you're almost completely unaware that the cathedral is there um, through the gate as you walk past. When you eventually go through it, you see the cathedral on the other side. Now, within the, the precinct uh, of the, uh, the Guildhall, uh, there was a magnificent chapel, um, probably built by the king's own craftsmen. To this uh, was added in 1356 a chantry college of five priests. That's to say, um, a chapel that was staffed with a residential corpus of uh, priests saying mass for the souls of the dead. This wasn't a sort of mini monastery. It was more like a, a life, or perhaps I should say, death insurance policy for the aldermen of the city. Um, a, in addition to the chapel within the precinct, there was a hall which was used as the main market for woolen cloth, which, of course, by this stage was London's principal export. And all these buildings, and I, th this reconstruction begins to show it, were probably set in uh, uh, nice gardens uh, and orchards um, uh, um, uh, uh, around the outside, planted with trees and flowers. So this precinct was the civic, economic, and judicial hub of the city. Now, the largest of all the city precincts uh, wasn't the Guildhall precinct. It was the precinct of St. Paul's. Uh, this uh, precinct was home to perhaps 300 people, as many as a small city parish. And the city government, I think, rather resented the uh, independence of this huge um, enclave. Um, this just is a line showing um, where, where, obviously, this is the medieval cathedral. There's the Wren building underneath. Um, you can see how large it was. Here's Paternoster Square. And there were gatehouses, um, um, six gatehouses, go lead leading into this uh, walled precinct. But I think St. Paul's, although it's very close to the Guildhall precinct, isn't, in fact, the most appropriate parallel for the Guildhall. The place that the Guildhall looked to was far more ambitious, because it was, in fact, Westminster Palace. Westminster, which you see here, this is the end of Westminster Abbey, this is Henry VII's chapel, this is the surviving uh, Westminster Hall, and the Houses of Parliament now are located um, in this uh, zone uh, here. Uh, this was the principal royal palace of England, and had been since the reign of Edward the Confessor. And at its heart was this extraordinary um, hall, which had been started by William Rufus in 1097. This was the ceremonial throne room of um, England. And, like the Guildhall, it contained the law courts that sat in the symbolic, president, uh, in the symbolic presence of the king's marble throne on a dais at the high end of the hall. The palace itself was set in a walled precinct, uh, which you can see the dotted line of here, with a massive great gateway here, the wall coming across here, a very, very high clock tower, and then the wall coming down to a water gate, which allowed you to come and go uh, on your barge, and the wall went down by the river here um, and continued. And in the corner here is the jewel tower, which still exists, um, here's the Victoria Tower in the House of Lords. You can still see it, the corner of the precinct before you come over here. So this is the royal, great royal precinct in uh, Westminster. And here um, is a view um, by Holler showing the outer court of the precinct. So you are looking at this angle here, all right? Uh, there is the, the clock tower. You see it's a pretty big thing. There is the gatehouse. Here you are in the outer precinct, and here is the entrance to the hall. Clock tower, gateway, entrance to the hall. Um, and it had this wonderful fountain in the middle, which um, on great occasions was linked to a cistern up here, which they filled with uh, red wine, 
and it poured out wine for the um, uh, amusement of the um, populace.